All right. So my name is Misha Rusev. You've seen it from, from the uh, invites. Uh, and I, I see some familiar faces here. So uh, welcome back if you've been to my prior sessions BMCC. Uh, I'm a big young instructor here. I teach. Uh, I just started teaching with them for the past few months. I teach once a month uh, different lunchtime workshops. Uh, but I really work uh, full time in this area. I work in, uh, on Wall Street, financial services, and I teach teaching is my passion, something I want to always wanted to do, and I find it to be an opportunity to kind of share my uh, my background, my experience and interest in, in, in this kind of setting. Uh, I've also been teaching at work for a while, you know, different training sessions, but I have found some experience of doing that. So the cl uh, today's class has, uh, I hope, a relevant but also an intriguing title, Navigating Change and Uncertainty with the Ancient Chinese Classical Change. I would imagine that most of us can relate to the subject of change. Very close, the right? It's something we we all experienced, especially in the last couple of years, when there was a lot of dramatic change. So we'll talk about that. But I'd like to have a most of our class to focus on this ancient Chinese classic of change, which is also called the uh, I Ching, and to see how it can help us cope with change and can help us um, in different ways. Really, depends on the person. So before we start, with it, unfortunately I have to go back and forth because there is no um, remote control here. So before I start uh, with the I Ching, I want to talk about change in general. Well, uh, I'd like to make a statement that change and uncertainty that change brings uh, is not really unique to, um, to our time, but it's been always the case since the beginning of human history. Uh, regardless whether we live, we live today or 2,000 years ago, we never really know for sure what the future brings, and we always need to have to like deal with the unknown. Uh, and so today, despite the advances in technology and, and the scientific breakthroughs, it's still the case. We still don't know. So a couple of points. For one, change uh, is inevitable, meaning that if you look at the some old philosophies, like Eastern philosophy, I don't know. Uh, just for receiving this. The change is something which is constant, meaning that things always change. Uh, and just a matter of time, whether we see the change or not. But also, uh, when I was preparing this, I found the interesting analogy to think of change as, as waves, right? In the ocean, there are waves coming, one after one after one, like nonstop. Uh, and that's always change. Change is always occurring, whether we're realizing uh, it's occurring right now or not. Uh, and it's just a matter of how big the changes are. And if it becomes really big, like the huge waves, right, then we notice it. Or we really pay attention, or we get getting kind of really struck by it. Uh, and then, I guess one way to think of dealing with, with change, and being able to navigate, navigate change, is, is that to understand we have two options. One option is to learn how to ride the wave of change. Like imagine the circle, right, on a huge wave. You can't really stop it, you just have to go with it. Or be really swept away. Like if a big tsunami comes, it, it just sweeps away everything on its way, right? So it's really up to you, depending on your skill and luck, uh, of what's going to happen once you get hit by this. So another point is to make about change is that it's cyclical. Uh, we can see cyclicality of change daily. We see sun coming up and down. We see seasons changing. We see certain patterns recurring in the society every so often, right? The economic problems we experience are not new. The historic events, historical events we've been seeing uh, have, have happened in the past, right? So it's cyclical. <clears throat> so now we're going back kind of to the close to the topic of today's uh, discussion is that the ancient Chinese observed nature, and observed human nature, and observed it for a long time. And they established these principles empirically that change is cyclical. No, first of all, it's inevitable. Second of all, it's cyclical. Uh, and uh, furthermore, they, they determined that there is a limited number of patterns in, into which change can develop. It's not random. It's not like something new every time, but there are patterns. And that's what makes this concept very interesting. If there are patterns, that there is some predictability, right? We can we can learn to understand how to deal with patterns. There is no guarantee, but there is a, there is a way to deal with this once we have some patterns in place. And that's what uh, gave uh, rise to 
uh, this classic, uh, it, now it's known classic of change in uh, I Ching, uh, is often pronounced uh, in, in English, so I Ching, some people say, which is translated as a classic of change. Okay? So let me talk about that for a minute, uh, give some background about this classic of change. Well, first of all, it is considered to be one of the oldest. In many of the sources I've seen, it's the oldest classic, Chinese classic. It dates back to uh, four, four, four century BC, which is about 2,400 years ago. Uh, and uh, originally, it was um, used for divination and fortune telling purposes. But I think around that time, when Confucius, with Confucius time, uh, the, 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 the book or the classic was really reinterpreted as a system of cosmology and philosophy. Uh, and it, it happened for a number of reasons. For, and the main reasons are that uh, it, it really, people realize that it captures some fundamental ideas and concepts which are relevant to anybody at any time or any place. Uh, some fundamental principles. And some of them are here. And again, I'm running through this really, really quickly because we only have 40 minutes. So I'm giving you really a few snapshots. You can uh, read about it later. I'll just give you some basic ideas. The dynamic balance of opposites, right? So we are probably familiar with yin and yang. Anybody knows yin and yang, right? The opposite forces, we know the sign. That's uh, underlying uh, the most fundamental principle of the I Ching, that everything that occurs uh, is driven by these two opposite forces balancing each other, right? That's one. The second concept, the evolution of events as a process. We often think, uh, and I, I hear this point of view often, is that things happen all of a sudden. Like, you know, something just occurred, some crisis, or this and that, and, and then is it, is it like out of the blue, right? What Chinese saying is that nothing happens uh, by accident. Uh, there is no such thing as, as, a, as a random event. There are, there are always causes behind it, whether we see them or not. So it's, there's always a process. Things build up to a certain point when they become visible. So one of the tools that Yi Ching gives you is trying to trace back to the beginning or to the origin of the event before it occurs. So try to understand, to sense what's maybe happening before it becomes visible, right? So evolution is a process. And finally, accept us the inevitability of change. Things change no matter what. It's just a, it's part of the world, like the way the world is, is designed. So it's good to keep it in mind. So, as I mentioned, they define the number of patterns. I didn't say how many, so now I will say that they've developed the 64 patterns of change. They said number 64 seems to be a magic number, uh, and it seems to be uh, to be able to adequately describe the number of combinations or, or number of patterns, enough to describe any possible event. So this diagram is only 1,100 years old. This picture came from one of the old sources of the ancient. It captures all of this uh, in the mystery of the I Ching in, in kind of in two, in two possible, in two different ways. For one, it tells you that change is cyclical, right? Everything, each each kind of block here, it's called the hexagram, we'll talk about it later, uh, is one pattern of change. So all together, if you count them, it will be 64. It shows that everything has to come back where it came from, mm -hmm. right? Cyclical nature. But it also tells you, yeah, but it doesn't have to go through the same cycle. There's always a possibility of going into any other cycle, so to speak. So there's always a possibility that what happened happens tomorrow is not the same what happened yesterday. It's not fully predictable. So this square design indicates the possibilities of development. It's not set in stone. So on one hand, it's very cyclical. On the other hand, it's very random. So go figure, right? So so that's the essence of of of. Uh, the chain conveyed by this um, by this picture. 